If you've been involved in project-based learning for some time, you're involved in an exciting new project. Can you share what it's about? The project was an international collaboration between our school and a school in the US known as Mananutech. They chose, uh, it was Stanford University that brought us together and we were chosen because both of us use PBL as the lead pedagogy. And what the project actually was focused on was bridges in education. So it was a science project to look at bridges, but it was also to look metaphorically at the bridges that connect education and the way education is moving. The project culminated with a presentation in China, which we were invited to give, which presented the students' work from both schools and their part of collaboration, if you like. And following that, myself and the teachers from the US, uh, Holly and Janice, we were able to facilitate workshops with the Chinese teachers uh, on PBL and how it could change their classrooms, because they're really interested in seeing how education is changing for the benefit of their students. Yeah. It's obviously been a fantastic project. What have you noticed about the kids' learning that's really excited you? I think we have to step away from the, what we see traditionally and in the project-based model, what we're seeing with the students is that we're developing critical thinking and deeper thinking, creativity, and it's enabling that collaborative process. And while we say that this is what PBL leads to, the evidence is what we see in the classroom. These kids learned far more than I could possibly teach. And my role then changes from being a teacher that believes I have all the content to being a teacher that can show them how to get the content, how to process the content and how to analyze it. Because that's where my skills are. They're not in all the content that they need. They're growing confidence. Uh, and with confidence comes the ability to collaborate, to share what they're learning and to be open about it and to present their work to audiences that are authentic. And I think ultimately what we've got to get down to is that this process makes learning authentic and puts learning in a place in our world that makes sense to them and gives it meaning. This has obviously been a really challenging and exciting project and challenging for all involved. What are the implications, you think, for our teachers in today's world? I think in terms of what it's changed about practice is that I feel like we are a community of learners in my classroom. It's not teacher and student. Our relationship is, is more fluid now. So what I sort of mean by that is that the students are teachers. So when I needed help with technology, a lot of the kids were really able to come across and help me with that. And when they need help analysing their data, I help them with that. So we really are a dynamic class in which we have to learn from each other. So collaboration goes between peers and it goes between teachers and uh, students as well. So that's really, I think, the biggest change to the classroom. And in terms of teaching practices for teachers, you have to be prepared to be the curator of research. And I think you have to readily admit that you don't know everything. You have to readily shift responsibility onto students and allow them to learn. And when you do that, when you can let go, their enthusiasm and their passion for what they're doing in class just skyrockets. And as a teacher, when you step back and you watch that, it's, it's an amazing experience and it's why I love going to class because I don't have to be an expert in what they're doing. I facilitate it but I watch them grow almost exponentially and it's just the most amazing experience and a privilege to be part of. Thank you.